So again, we're here uh, learning about how we can move beyond basic essays and exams and uh, create more equitable methods of assessments. And um, once again, um, I'm Dr. Lindsay Reeland. Y'all can call me Lindsay. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm an inclusive teaching coordinator for CIDL at NIU. Um, and I will be reaching out to all of you after this presentation, and you'll have uh, access to my email that I'll you know, share with you directly. So if you do want to follow up conversations, if you have questions, if you have concerns, um, we can have those one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, very, very easily moving forward. Okay, let me turn off my little face uh, so we can focus on the slides. So uh, our goals are that uh, at the end of this workshop, we're going to understand the limitations of traditional assessment methods, such as essays and exams and recognize the potential biases and assumptions that are embedded in their design. We're going to explore alternative assessment forms, considering methods that better align with our learning objectives and uh, promote fair evaluation. And we're gonna learn how to design assessments that are inclusive and consider uh, and are considerative of diverse student skills, capabilities, needs, um, and that foster more equitable evaluation. Um, so I want to start off by saying um, why we might move beyond essays and exams. Um, I am going to talk a little bit uh, towards the end of this presentation about ways that we can adapt the essays and exams that we already have uh, to work better, to be more equitable, if if it doesn't make sense to completely leave them behind, um, if it's going to take you a while to completely change up assessment, what are some tweaks we can make? If it doesn't make sense for your class to uh, have, you know, your 200 students all uh, do, you know, individualized projects, if that just logistically does not work based off of your workload and bandwidth, that's okay. Let's think about ways that we can um, make things work for where you are. Um, and not all essays and exams are, are going to be necessarily inequitable. Um, I do want to say that, but there are limitations to these forms of assessment. Um, there's limitations to all forms of assessment, though, I want to say, um, especially when we are working with an education system that uh, is associated with numbers and associated with GPA. Like there's uh, a limitation as far as if we can see students uh, complete things and do that in a way that meets the timelines for the class, that meets uh, their grade goals, their GPA goals to keep scholarships, et cetera. So there's uh, a lot of moving parts to this, I want to say. Um, so exams um, and essays to some extent, but a lot of exams have inequitable time limitations. Um, they can create stressful learning environments, especially if we're asking students to uh, do something under a time crunch or do something um, very specifically uh, without knowing what they're doing much uh, very long beforehand. Um, if uh, we're asking them to do a final exam or a, a final essay that's worth, uh, you know, a large number percentage of their total grade. Um, it can stigmatize accommodations. Um, and uh, we use the word accommodations. I like the word needs. Um, if students need more time, if they need a, a quiet environment, uh, you know, those are uh, considered accommodations, but they're they're just basic needs, right, for their brains and their bodies to work in the best way that they can, but um, by having essays and exams that are 
very strict with time, are very strict with where they can be completed and how they need to look. Um, it stigmatizes these accommodations and uh, creates an environment where it might feel like someone who has accommodations is uh, getting a better opportunity for success than others. And also creates this environment where if people can't get accommodations for something, um, they are in an environment that is inequitable. Um, it can encourage imposter syndrome in insecurity if you have students that uh, English isn't their first language um, or isn't their primary language or speak different dialects of English. Um, it can be very difficult for them to feel good about writing essays. It can feel very difficult for them to feel good about asking for help from um, the writer's workshop or the writing center on campus. Um, or from the instructors, too. Um, essays and exams are also generally not enjoyable um, for students to do or for us to grade. Again, it might be a time crunch thing where exams make sense uh, or having a very standardized essay makes sense for people to grade. Uh, but generally, people just don't enjoy that. Um, and hopefully, students would be able to learn from assessment and also enjoy that so that they can take those skills on further. Um, and also, hopefully, it wouldn't be a complete drain on um, those of us that are teaching to grade those things. Um, often, essays and exams don't actually reflect being able to use the information outside of the classroom. You might learn information and be writing about it or be answering questions about it, um, but it's not application of that information. Um, and because of that, they don't promote long-term retention um, of information, especially if it's an exam where students are possibly cramming. Um, and a lot of these are focused on meeting the standards of the evaluation method, not applying content and skills learned. So if you have, uh, and I've been guilty of this too, if you 20% of the essay um, on the rubric goes to whether or not they meet the standards for citation or for formatting, um, we are grading based off of the evaluation method, not based off of the content. Um, so what is the purpose? Are we actually just teaching them how to format something correctly? Or are we trying to get them to use writing skills within um, the essay or demonstrate an understanding of specific content in the essay? So those are some things that we need to think about um, as we think about assessment and we think about maybe making uh, better essays and exams or leaving those behind altogether. Um, some considerations when you're creating these alternative assessments is uh, thinking about if you want to assess your students' acquisition of specific content knowledge, or if you want to uh, think about, or if you want to assess whether they can apply it, um, or if you want to do both. So that's, again, the difference between writing a paper um, about teaching versus creating materials to demonstrate that they can apply this information. Um, do you want to uh, assess the actual project or do you wanna assess the, pro the process that they're doing? Um, or maybe you wanna assess both. So if they're supposed to be building something for um, mechanical engineering, uh, is it, does the thing work? or are you trying to get them to think about the process needed to build this thing, um, or is it all important? Um, think about what you specifically want to assess. Are you looking at writing skills? Are you looking at speaking skills, technology, creativity? If you are thinking about writing skills, there are still some ways that we can um, encourage students to write. Think about writing, reflect on their writing without just writing an essay um, and without just writing the five paragraph essay too. 
Um, is there something that you want them to bring in like a visual component? Is that necessary? Is that desirable? Um, can they be creative in ways that you're not requiring them to so that they're maybe applying um, skills that they have from other courses or just that they've uh, accumulated along the way? Um, or is that unnecessary for, for what you're doing? Um, is the ability for students to work in a group an important component of the assessment? Are you trying to encourage them to ask others for help or to do group thinking in order to solve problems? Um, is that something that's going to be relevant uh, within either courses that they're going to be taking in the future? Um, that this course is a pathway towards or within the field in general? Um, or does that also make the class better for students? <laughs> Are they more likely to be successful or to be just generally happy in your class if there is group work and they can chat with other people? Um, and is it important for the assessment to be time constrained. Uh, there are certainly fields that our students are going to be going into as professionals where they have to make decisions very quickly. Um, and those decisions could be very important, but there are other places where they're going to be getting feedback from others. They're going to uh, be able to look up information, to use calculators, to uh, use formulas, to double check their work. Um, that they don't have to memorize something. So uh, is that reflected in the way that we do assessment? Um, or are we asking them to be time constrained for a specific reason? Authentic assessment is something that uh, there's a big push for. And I mean, we see that a lot in um, the field of education. We also see that a lot in marketing and it might look different depending on the level of uh, students we have, depending on whether it's um, a requirement for a major or minor, the courses, or if it's uh, just something that they are doing to uh, get credits in order to, uh, you know, to graduate. Um, but authentic assessment is the applying um, information from the course, whether it's specific content or its skills, um, to, to projects that are outside of the course. So to real life situations, um, either within the working field or within personal lives. And it helps students actually latch on to uh, to this information and creates an environment that's that's more equitable than exams, especially when we think about um, students' test anxiety, when we think about uh, time limits, again, when we think about uh, student needs accommodations. So this essentially asks students to do the thing and to see how it applies to their lives beyond um, beyond the specific class. So it's not just a do this thing because I said you need to do this thing. It's do this thing and see how you might need to do this thing again in the future or where you might pull these resources from if you need to do this thing in the future. Um, and it allows students to uh, find resources to rehearse if there's supposed to be a a performance to practice these skills and to get feedback and continue to work on these things instead of taking a one-time uh, exam or possibly having a one-time essay, turning it in and moving on. Um, and generally authentic assessment is something that uh, is larger projects, but it also could be smaller things along the way that add up to um, something bigger. Um, so, uh, some of these are going to be, uh, applicable to what y'all are doing in your classrooms. Um, some of them are, uh, not necessarily, I wanted to give a variety of examples, 
uh, from different courses, not knowing who would be in the audience today. Um, and it's very possible that some of you are already doing these things. So uh, I'm pulling from things that I know uh, our friends are doing across the university and that I've seen other people at other universities do um, or things that I've experienced as a student as well that I thought, oh gosh, this was really cool. I wish, I wish, you know, other people had experienced these cool things too. Um, so I have a few slides that just talk about different forms of assessment um, and have vague examples uh, from, from uh, different colleges uh, and, and programs. Um, so for those of us that are from marketing, this might not be a, a huge departure from what y'all are doing already, uh, but coming up with an advertisement or a marketing campaign, um, for somebody in business, this might be developing a plan for a company. What does this look like? Uh, what are the materials that you would need to get together uh, either for uh, maybe a business that already exists or for one that uh, might be up and coming that you would be making pitches for? Writing a critical letter to an author, a theorist, a public figure. Um, so I've seen this a lot in the K through 12 world where uh, younger students are asked to, you know, maybe write a letter to, um, to a political figure, uh, to someone who's doing cool things in, um, in the children's literature world, um, to historical figures. Uh, we can still have uh, college students doing this too. Um, I've used this in my own uh, gender and sexuality studies courses, and it encourages students to engage with, uh, with theory and to engage with the individuals that are putting out theory in a way that uh, just writing an essay about it wouldn't encourage them to do. So actually writing a letter to Judith Butler, asking for clarification about the things that she's saying about uh, gender performance or saying, I agree with these things and here are my personal beliefs or personal experiences that lead me to agreeing with you. Um, and that could be as, uh, you know, this could be a replacement for a reading journal. This could also be a larger project where um, you're asking students to write letters uh, and bring in resources from what other people are doing in the world and actually, uh, you know, have references and whatnot. Um, writing a children's book or a YA book, uh, young adult book, um, and for example, in biology, this might not be something that uh, for our larger classes would be easy to do, but writing a children's book to explain what genetics are. So using that information of uh, you learn something by teaching other people about the thing um, and spending time coming up with a children's book, especially in the world where we have um, access to uh, AI, and we can uh, use that as a way to create images really easily, uh, where we can Photoshop things really easily. Having students come up with a book um, might be a cool way of uh, encouraging them to take in information and to, uh, to demonstrate that they have learned that information and they understand that information in a different way than, you know, just an exam. Um, creating YouTube videos. Uh, somebody from computer sciences might create a video on how to troubleshoot an issue. They might demonstrate uh, that they can, or there might be a video talking about how to code. It doesn't matter if there are already YouTube videos that have been created about this thing, um, but just allowing students to, again, teach others how to do the thing 
um, share that information. Uh, you know, some of our students are going to be sharing that information with other people outside of the university anyway. How can we teach them how to do that in um, in a way that demonstrates that they have an understanding and demonstrates that uh, that this information is useful elsewhere. Um, performance, obviously, if we're working with uh, performing arts students, this might be, you know, like a, a given, but even in classes like counseling, you might be doing role playing of a counseling session. If we're in education, it might be role playing, um, responding to uh, a hot moment in class. It might be looking at how you would uh, set up a room or what would be important within a specific space. How would you personalize that? Writing executive summary um, for somebody in public administration that might be summarizing a larger report uh, so that you have that information available to you. But uh, for for further use, but you you don't necessarily have to look at this larger you know report document. Um, you know something that might be relevant for you as you move into the future, or might be relevant when you are. Um, working as an intern, possibly if you have an internship with this with this uh, program. Um, analysis and response to a case study. So uh, this applies again to a variety of, of people, but in nursing, you might have a case study of a patient and ask students to assess and create a plan of care. Um, this would also be a great opportunity for students to work together as a healthcare team in order to determine what's uh, what would be the best plan of action moving forward, what would be the, the tests that would be necessary, what would we be looking for as we are waiting to get answers from doctors. Um, analysis of data or graph. So meteorology students, for example, might examine and explain data collected from Doppler, um, reviewing a, a book, a play, a performance. Um, we see this, uh, I think, in other areas, but in art history, uh, you might be uh, examining a performance piece, whether it is something that is new or not. It might be an opportunity for you to uh, think about it critically and apply what you know from uh, the course to something that exists outside of the course. Um, we might want to create infographics, diagrams, tables, charts, visual aids. And so part of this would be uh, letting students know what uh, tools would be necessary in order to create these things. Um, so setting them up with if it's Adobe Creative Cloud, if it is something that is available to them through uh, through the Microsoft you know, world uh, and making sure that they know how to use those specific tools uh, and then demonstrating that they can use the tools and that they understand the content as well by using, for example, in environmental studies, a visual aid, a visual aid to depict community con con ugh, conservation plan. So students would not only um, develop the plan, they would use the visual aid and then possibly have to share that with other people. You could have students writing a research proposal. So uh, for those of us that have students that are working in fields where they might actually be applying for grants, um, this would be a great opportunity for someone uh, to write a proposal for a grant uh, to do research within a specific field like biomedical engineering um, for them to practice these skills and then learn how to apply them in the future or also maybe that's something that you want to work forward uh, or excuse me, want to work with 
in the future, maybe you're going to be applying for grants within, um, within your field. And so having students help you with that, because maybe they're going to be part of that larger project, uh, would be a great opportunity for them to learn, but also to understand what that process looks like. Um, in PolySci, you might have students writing posters um, and uh, or creating posters, and they might be asked to think about uh, aspects of gender and politics and how that's changed within a specific uh, space, whether it's the U.S., whether it's uh, Syria, wherever that might be. So not only are we, uh, again, thinking about the content in a way that we might in writing an essay or answering questions on an exam, but we're applying it into, uh, into a poster that uh, we're demonstrating our knowledge, we're thinking about it, we're interacting with the materials in a different way to uh, solidify that information. You might have students uh, creating a portfolio to demonstrate uh, improvement or evolution of work and thinking over time. Um, in education, I'm sure that uh, a lot of y'all are already doing this by having students create a portfolio of a teaching unit. So uh, collecting um, materials, what resources are we looking at? Uh, what projects are the students going to be working on? Um, and even collecting materials from uh, the students that are currently in your class and seeing how what unit plan they created in the beginning of the semester has how has that developed and changed over time and having students reflect on that as well um so what have they learned over time and uh how can we see that learning how can they prove to you that that learning happened for them um powerpoint presentations i think that they have uh their popularity ebbs and flows um but uh, we know that presentations are applicable to different types of work. Um, for example, I use PowerPoint regularly. Um, so for students in the nonprofit program, maybe you ask them to put together a presentation for stakeholders. Uh, again, for students that are either in the education program or are in a program where they are going to be teaching in the future, um, asking them to put de together presentations of how they would teach information, um, whether it's, uh, you know, a role-playing activity or uh, them demonstrating the steps that they would go through, a great opportunity to get them to apply knowledge and demonstrate understanding um, and do it in a different way. Um, and reflections are also super useful, uh, and having students reflect on what they've learned from an experience is also a great way for them to, uh, further solidify information. Um, so in the field of sociology, for example, maybe you have students write about, uh, juvenile correction agencies in general, but if they visit one, having them write a reflection on that visit, whether it's like something that's going to be super formal or not, gives them an opportunity to process their thoughts and their feelings and think about what they've been learning in the class and how that applies to that specific space. If it doesn't apply at all, what biases they might've had going into this experience. Um, and as promised, um, I want to talk a little bit about improving essays and exams. So again, some of these projects might not work for some of us. Um, if we have large classes, but we have um, graduate assistants uh, helping us out, that might work okay. If we have large classes, but we don't necessarily have the human power um, and, and the bandwidth 
we might need to stick to the essays and exams that we're using, um, depending on what a department chair might be saying. We might need to stick to essays and exams, um, but there are ways that we can improve them um, and help students be successful, help students retain information, um, and hopefully help us also in the long run. Um, so uh, using exams, we might uh, have students instead of just answering uh, the questions and moving on, um, giving them an opportunity to uh, explain their answer. Why, why did they choose this answer? Because, and why does it make it correct? Why is, are the other options wrong? So they're not just clicking through and uh, guessing randomly or just putting, um, you know, hoping for the best. They're demonstrating that uh, the process, the logic there, they're showing their work, right? Um, we often ask students to do that in other spaces, but for example, in anthropology, uh, they might be answering um, questions and then explain why specific answers given on that exam don't describe the prompt about Illinois ar archaeology. Um, you might have them write a meaningful paragraph instead of having them write an entire essay um, or having them even do, um, you know, take an exam. Maybe you're asking them to uh, use specific terms and write a paragraph that demonstrates that they understand what's going on. So for uh, kinesiology, you might have students demonstrating understanding of adaptable fitness programs for senior citizens. So what are specific terminology that apply to that? How are we thinking about accessibility? How are we thinking about needs? And how are we uh, adapting fitness programs for that? Um, Short exams are another option for us. So instead of having 50 plus questions, um, instead moving to two to three questions with specific context and demonstrating how that information is applied and uh, going in with the intent to not uh, trick students with confusing language or information. Um, I'm hoping in general that we're not trying to trick students with that um, in our exams, although I have heard students complain that they feel like people are trying to trick them. Um, but this might be instead of having, you know, a bunch of larger exams, or excuse me, like two or three large exams, this might be okay, we're gonna have four short exams and we're gonna really demonstrate that we understand what's going on so that when we're moving forward, we're all on the same page. So for math, you might be contextualizing problems within real life. Uh, so instead of talking about um, the two trains leaving from other parts of the uh, country and moving at a specific, or moving at two different speeds and et cetera, et cetera, those sort of uh, questions that many of us are maybe familiar with. Um, thinking about applying information from the math class to like a road trip or a project for a fixer upper home. Um, how do these problems, how does this information, how do these formulas actually apply to uh, student life outside of uh, those spaces? Um, having students write an annotated, an annotated bibliography, um, maybe instead of having them write an essay that uh, is super long and um, we can have them demonstrate uh, understanding of the research in a given area in a way that would be, we would be able to build upon in other uh, spaces within the class. 
instead of, again, having them just write an essay. So um, in psychology, you might have them collect current reliable resources, uh, talk about why they're reliable, uh, and explain what they're saying about the, to the, the topic. Um, and then they can use those later in the course, um, maybe on a larger project, but uh, this gives them an opportunity to sort of build off of something and, and demonstrate knowledge. Um, group exams are also uh, an option for those of us that have, uh, that feel like we have to uh, give exams or are being told that we have to give exams. Um, so having students collaborate on an exam um, or having them take it on their own and then they go with groups to retake uh, parts of the exam or to consult one another about their answers and giving them an opportunity to uh, redo those based off of what they've been um, talking about with, with the people in their group. Um, so for example, in nutrition, you might be collaborating with others to determine the chemical properties of food. Um, and these group exams, um, similar to group work that I mentioned earlier, are really great for students that are in fields where it's going to be collaborative work or it's not going to be um, work under a time crunch again. So if this is an opportunity where they would be able to consult resources if they forgot something within the field or to ask questions and get feedback from others, this is um, a great way to demonstrate that uh, their peers are resources too um, and to create an environment that's not super competitive but is uh, very much focused on community and building something together. So I've talked a lot, um, but I'm curious. Uh, I know some of you have done really cool things in your classes um, or have experienced really cool things as, as students or as people that have uh, watched their colleagues. So um, I'm curious, what are some ways that you have improved essays and exams um, in your own, own courses or you've seen other people improve them? Um, if you're not using essays and exams, what are some assessments that you're using um, that are different? And if there are some challenges that you have encountered um, or predict that you might encounter by moving away from exams and essays. And you are free to turn on mics. You are free to type in the chat, whatever uh, works best for you at this time. I can share one. Yeah, that's great. Um, so we, I, I guess, I guess it would fall into the category of an essay, but one of the classes I teach for our undergraduate special ed majors is they have to do an assessment uh, with a student and then they have to design an intervention. So it's, I mean, it's got all the core features of an essay. Um, but one thing that we found, you know, that's essentially their, the final product of, of one of the classes before they go into student teaching. And so it's a huge product that they, it's, I mean, it's, it's, probably 15 to 20 pages by the end, by, by the end. But one thing we found is, you know, at the end of the semester, um, it's really overwhelming for the students to have to do this, this massive project. And so what we, what we've decided as a program is just breaking it up into meaning, kind of meaningful chunks. And so throughout the semester, they have essentially four parts that culminates into the final project. And so by the end of the semester, they've already done the full assignment. They just have to put all four pieces together. Um, and so that's something that I found that is really, really helpful um, because, you know, if it was just, okay, by the end of the semester, you have to do this whole project, um, yeah. I think we would, we would lose a lot of students um, rather than just saying, hey, this is the same assignment. It's just broken up into four, uh, four parts that you can get individualized feedback throughout the semester on. Yeah, that's great, especially 
again, students can, because it's broken up in that way, students can focus on um, what they're learning and not just focus on like, I have to get this big thing done um, and not just focus on like, oh, do I understand this, this formatting? Do I understand um, how to do these other things? Do I know how to write 10 pages at a time? Whatever that looks like. Um, so yeah, I think that's a great example of uh, this is an important thing for students to do. So how can we make this work better for our students, feel less overwhelming, but still make sure that they understand these steps and um, are leaving with these, these skills and this content. Yeah, that's great. I can share it as well. Uh, so uh, I did all my education in Finland and uh, what we do there a lot is learning diaries, which um, well, it's basically reflecting on your learnings and applying your learnings into the real world. So let's say we are learning a new topic and the students need to write in their reflective diaries. How do they understand the topic without giving me the definition, but rather seeing it in the real world, in their uh, everyday lives. Let's say we discussed pricing and different strategies for pricing. And then they say like, oh, I actually noticed that Costco does this. And uh, let's say Louis Vuitton does that. And they never thought about it and now it makes sense, something like that. So that they kind of explain to me what they learn, but also kind of see it in the real world. Yeah, no, that's great. The fact that they can, yeah, reflect and then apply information at the same time. You're hitting multiple uh, multiple ways for them to uh, have that information click in um, in really helpful ways. And that sort of reflection can happen in a different a variety of different ways. Uh, for those of you that are interested in uh, incorporating more reflection in your courses, you might have students write something. Um, but if writing is maybe not the, isn't super comfortable for them, um, or isn't a big focus, having them do a short little, uh, video diary, um, having them, if this classes are small enough, having them meet with you for a couple minutes and reflect on what's happening, um, having them work with others in like a group and reflect together. Those are all options um, that they can demonstrate that they're thinking about what they're learning. And if they have questions or concerns, it gives them an opportunity to process the information and come up with those questions and concerns. Um, because some of our students can't, uh, like they need time for things to marinate, right? Um, and so, uh, so yeah, those those sort of reflections are are a great opportunity, and yeah, then if they can apply that information further, um, yeah, that's awesome. So anybody else want to share about some interesting things that they've um, that they're doing that they've witnessed other people doing or uh, even just talk about like how would this work for um, a specific class? I know that not everybody who is like a GTA um, you're not necessarily going to have, uh, unless you are given an opportunity to be instructor of record for a course, you're not necessarily going to have the opportunity to change um, what the assessments look like in your, um, in the classes that you're helping with. Uh, but maybe this is a good opportunity to think about if you're potentially teaching in the future, um, or if you're working one on one with students, like how this information might stick a little bit better. What are some ways that we might um, change up what we have accept accepted to be like traditional and to be uh, the expectations 
for assessment and um, maybe rethink those a little bit. Okay, if other questions, concerns, uh, thoughts come up, 100% um, let me know. Um, as I said, I'm gonna be uh, sending information out to you all uh, that um, has the resources that I've used for this presentation, but also has the recording. So um, please do reach out if you have questions, concerns, if you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one talk about what's going on. Um, but thank you all for joining. Um, I'm so glad that we are getting to think about these things a little bit more and I'm happy to hear what other people are, are doing in other spaces across the university. Um, so Thanks for joining. Um, I, I really appreciate you all taking out the time to come talk with me today.